Okay, so we're back inside of the Suicide Squad to kill the Justice League, and I've now finished the main campaign. The story mission is now complete, and we're moving into the end game. This video is going to be revolving around my opinions and my quote-unquote somewhat of a review based on the factor of the main storyline not taking the end game into consideration. I have got a lot of positives to say about this game, although there are also a lot of negatives. So we're going to dive on in to what it is that I think about this game and whether it is you should buy or not now if you haven't already smash the beautiful blue thumbs up and subscribe post notifications turned on it'd be greatly appreciated also make sure you're checking out our sponsor advanced gg the number one clinically proven ng supplement on the market my favorite flavor is cherry vanilla but you guys can catch an array of flavors via the link in the description and use code cloud at checkout for a cheeky discount so with that being said we're going to dive on in to the Suicide Squad storyline. Now, do not panic. We are going to be telling you guys when the spoilers and warnings will come above before each time. So you can make sure that you stay tuned to those ones. And if you want to jump off at any point, then you can do. But this game is absolutely incredible. And for me, I actually really, really enjoyed it. I've had so much fun in the last 24 hours of playing this game. And the campaign itself was, for the most part, pretty damn good. It did have some flaws and we're going to address those today. But as far as the main mechanics of transversal, was absolutely immense. I mained Captain Boomerang, although have played with all of the other characters as well. Captain Boomerang was my favourite as far as being able to transverse around the map, with Harley Quinn being probably my least favourite with the grappling hook. It was really, really difficult to be able to make sure that you had certain areas you could see. Everything felt a lot slower than when you were actually using Captain Boomerang or maybe even King Shark. And the easiest to manoeuvre around with would have been Deadshot with the jetpack because it's a pretty standard movement. So Transversal is an absolute bang out of the park for me. It's really fast paced. It was really enjoyable to do and I could just, just swing around metropolis all bloody day it was so much fun moving into the combat though the combat was actually quite enjoyable for the most part the weapons i felt that throughout the storyline weren't really too crucial they will obviously make a bigger factor come the end game material but for the most part inside of the story it didn't really make a massive difference and i didn't feel a massive difference anyway a lot of it was just kind of more the mechanics of how things worked and how you took out certain bosses i'm sure that damage points did make a difference but but it just didn't feel like it in hindsight. As long as you're putting on new weapons as you level up, you kind of, for the most part, are going to be absolutely fine throughout the playthrough. Now, taking a look into the story. The story of this is actually quite entertaining, although did have one lapse moment. The main story, for those of you guys who don't know and is pretty much in the title, so you, there's no spoilers here, you actually have to go ahead and kill the Justice League. Now, I have watched a couple of other reviews, one of which was Dreamcast Guy and his main complaint was that we kill the Justice League. I, I don't really understand it. He has obviously some complex with enjoying the Justice League for what they are and these are obviously characters we've grown up loving and I completely agree with that but then if you didn't want to kill the Justice League maybe don't buy a game that has it in the title. That's just my partake on it. The storyline was actually a grade and it opened up to some actually massive amounts of gameplay that can come from this via DLCs and expansions with the way that Brainiac has actually worked around that Elseverse and being able to open up different areas. We obviously have the main people that we are going to be taking out through this which before the naming actually commences if you guys don't want to know who it is taking out it's a little obvious but spoiler ahead we are going to be going in and taking out the flash the green lantern we've also got batman and we have got superman and they are the four key elements to the people that you are taking out throughout this part of the storyline there are some really really good parts which involve wonder woman and for me they were probably more the more iconic bits and it actually related quite a lot and really well mainly because obviously i knew all of the characters entailed and the story worked extremely well with the relationships between superman and wonder woman it was a really really intense point and there is a point in the storyline where it actually gets mega intense and wonder woman doesn't actually make it through but when we get into the way that we take out each boss the critiques that were made via IGN and other people were mainly with The Flash because that's what they had experience with right at the beginning and they said that he moved around way too quick. Now for me, this is absolute codswallock. It's the bloody Flash. He's going to move around really fast and each mechanic worked really differently. I'm a little bit skeptical on whether some of these people have actually gone through the storyline or not based on how it is that they actually portrayed a lot of these boss fights they kind of saw it as we just took out every boss with a 
with weapons and with bullets and it wasn't actually the case if they paid attention to the storyline the way that it kind of worked was with the green lantern you obviously had those mechanics entailed and the storyline took you through to actually having yellow lanterns to be able to take out the green lantern it just worked in that way and then when we looked through to superman we had some yellow kryptonite that worked alongside the main weaknesses towards superman death in the end it's really really interesting how it worked although one complaint i will have is with batman i did see a lot online about the fact that people were not happy with that and that how it done batman dirty i didn't look into it whatsoever and just wanted to play through it myself although I did obviously hear about it and when you see See this right here this is not i don't know how the hell they saw this as a good idea i know that the area looks really cool and the boss looks amazing and maybe it was meant to be some big iconic finishing time for batman inside of this era but realistically this just was ridiculously easy it was absolutely not fun at all and i just found it completely lacklustered for a character that has carried the arkham series of which we're playing in the same realm as right now the Batman Arkham series was an absolutely iconic, iconic series throughout gaming history and to do Batman dirty like this I was a little bit peeved off, especially considering how we had certain quests inside of the game revolved around Batman that were so damn enjoyable that for me just kind of made no sense at all. It seemed like they had rushed the ending to Batman or had no ideas on how they could do it and just needed to get something up. Let's just make him 50 foot tall and covered in fire. It didn't really make much sense to me whatsoever and I didn't enjoy that aspect, even in the slightest if I'm being completely honest. With the story around Superman, the Superman story worked really well inside of the game, although the fight itself was actually quite challenging and I did find it a little bit tedious to points just because he moves around really, really quickly. But even though that that's the case, because obviously Superman, he can fly around really fast, you kind of accept those pointers. Although the icons and being able to know where he was was really, really difficult to follow. I think that it was kind of one of those that it was definitely going to be a rinse and repeat and if you don't finish it the first time just be persistent it is quite an enjoyable boss fight and the way that they've portrayed superman inside of it worked really really well as far as the comedic value and the way that the scriptures went i personally thought that the scripting inside of this game was absolutely hilarious harley quinn i've always been a harley quinn fan and they actually portrayed harley so damn well inside of this game as well as captain boomerang they portrayed his personality incredibly to be fair, there's not many people they didn't nail down. The Green Lantern was a massively egotistical dude and it kind of worked really, really well with the main characters. And then we had Superman's out-of-this-world mentality, the mysterious sort of look. And then right at the end, he became extremely vocal and was just absolutely slating you to the high hills. And it was just so, so damn good to watch, so damn good to listen to. And there is a lot of cutscenes inside of this game. So if they didn't do that very well it wouldn't have made it very enjoyable now i haven't got into the end game of this game yet mainly because i didn't want it to taint my viewing on this part of the game as far as i'm concerned the best part of this was always going to be the storyline and for me personally i'm fully expecting the end game to be a little lacklustered but that's because of how this game pans out the arkham series and the team that were around it did an amazing job and i knew full well that this would probably follow it up i'm a little disappointed with the Batman side of things like I've already stated but for the most part this game is absolutely incredible. I had to personally pay £100 to be able to actually get hold of this game for myself as we weren't obviously obtaining review copies but that's a whole different story altogether and that is still outstanding with IGN and Forbes all getting involved and there's loads of craziness but irrelevant to it I had to pay for this myself and I for me this was money well spent and I definitely feel like I've got my money's worth. It definitely was enjoyable and I could still play it again I haven't done any of the side missions and I haven't really ventured around and done a lot of the Riddler's content so as far as the main storyline goes it's just nailed it for me all in one go the rest of it could be absolutely atrocious but that's a whole other video hopefully in the next couple of days once i manage to get some time into the end game and get some time in with the riddler's stuff and the side missions entailed but for the most part the storyline was enough for me to carry it all the way through and i had so much fun now from here where do we go 
obviously we've got the end game we have just started up the clan if you guys want to join it it's on screen there's also up on the community page you can contact me via the comments in that one or via the comment section here and we'll try and get hold of as many of you as possible and we'll start to run this clan up and get some people involved because i think it'd be extremely extremely fun this game for me solid absolutely solid with all the controversies around it i'd say it was a solid 8 out of 10 and i had so much fun and will continue to play this game as we move forward so if you haven't already smash that beautiful blue thumbs up and subscribe post notifications turned on i've had so much fun in here and i can't wait for you guys to do the same thanks again for watching appreciate you all and as always i'll see you in the clouds